This is the Jeep Gladiator Rubicon and it's built like a tank. I'm half expecting a gun turret to just pop out of the roof. This competes with the likes of the Ford Ranger Raptor and Toyota Hilux, but honestly, because of the off-road capabilities, it may as well be in a category all on its own. I've been driving this monster around with my family of three to see how it performed, and it's been an interesting week. Stay watching to find out why. There are only two models available for the Gladiator, and the Rubicon is the top model, despite sharing the same engine with the Night Eagle. This will set you back around $87,000 before on-road costs, which makes it one of the most expensive utes on the market. One of the closest competitors is the Ford Ranger Raptor. You get some pretty cool features, like heated front leather seats, and when you're on a private road, removable windscreen, doors, and roof. But make no mistake, you are paying for the off-road capabilities because this is the only trail rated ute on the market. For the price tag, I was hoping for a more well-rounded features list and that extends to safety, but I'll touch upon that later in the video. Like its sibling, the Wrangler, this is chock full of character with the signature blocky black accents and robust shape. This is the car you want with you during a zombie apocalypse. Very capable looking. I mean, look at the 32 inch off-road tires. There's little Easter eggs to be found, which just adds to the sense of fun. Each 17 inch alloy wheel has a little Willys MB icon on it, which if you don't know, that was a military vehicle that we used in World War II. The red dash is sharp and tough looking and actually quite shallow. So it makes you feel like you're right in on the action. The Rubicon leather seats do add some refinement to the cabin, but you're always reminded about the capabilities of this car because of the exposed hex bolts and metal bits. Despite being modern, you can definitely see the military heritage in the design, and it's a nice nod to the past. It is a bit of a challenge to get inside. For example, my dad was happy to sit in it once and then leave it to the young ones. It has wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but I would have preferred it to be wireless because I'm never a fan of a trailing cable in a cabin. Plus, there doesn't seem to be, other than between the cup holders, a dedicated spot for your phone. I reckon that could get messy. The storage throughout the car isn't the best. You do have some netting and webbing, which means that you can tuck away gear. It's just not going to be very neat. A special mention though are the air vents which have a 360 degree swivel and I thought were cool. This has clearly been adapted from a left hand side drivetrain because the handbrake's on the wrong side and it does take a little bit to get used to and the driver's footwell curves in meaning that there's nowhere to put your left foot when you're driving on the road. So could get a bit annoying on a long roadie. It's a bit harder to get into the back seat because of how narrow the door apertures are. And it's also really easy to whack yourself on the door lock anchors and this crossbar. Plenty of space though once you actually get in. And I had my six foot two friend back here and there was no complaints over the weekend. So the amenities in this back row are a little bit bare bones. You have directional air vents and controllers for the windows plus reading lights and that's pretty much it. But my six year old loved his high seating position and the great view he had this week. He also treated it as a little bit of an adventure climbing in and out, but I had to help him all week, which was a little bit annoying. There are Isofix child seat mounts on the outboard seats plus three top tether points, but realistically, you're only gonna be fitting two child seats back here. I do like though that has a 60-40 split fold because it means you don't have to take out both seats if you have to move one in and out. Front passengers though are gonna feel a squeeze when a zero to four rearward facing child seat is installed. The tray isn't as large as some other dual cab utes on the market, but it will serve us for your off-road adventures. The assisted tailgate was handy this week and I love the grippy liner in the tray. The anchor points and the rail track system were also great, but I would have preferred a lockable lid. You can get a hard or soft tonneau cover, which I do recommend. Because it's so tall, you do notice the lack of side steps or ledges on this.
The V6 engine is powerful and there's plenty of pulling power in this, making it really nice to go up hills, but it's also handles fairly well in the city too. I didn't go too hardcore off-road, but I did take this on rougher terrain that had slippery mud and holes, and I felt very comfortable in this. It was a little bit of a pain to shift through the ranges because the shifter is a bit stiff, but if you want to know more about the off-road stuff, check out Crafty's Adventure Review on the Cars Guide site. The cabin's pretty quiet at lower speeds, but those tires really start howling at you when your speed creeps up, which could get tiresome on a longer trip. The steering's actually quite vague and the wheelbase <laughs> makes parking this a hilarious affair. This is the sort of car that you do have to choose your car spot carefully because it's 5.6 meters long and 1.9 meters wide. It also just doesn't have the turning circle that you hope for. To put it into perspective, most cars average 12 meters, but the Gladiator actually adds almost two meters to that average. Once you get used to it, you can manage, but it's something to consider. I really like the reversing camera because it's very clear and the dynamic guidelines are helpful. But I do feel like on a car of this size, a 360 degree view camera would have been most welcome. The official combined fuel cycle is 12.4 litres per 100 kilometres. But real world testing saw my figure at 14.6 litres. So it is thirsty. But I reckon if you're considering a vehicle like this, you probably won't really care. And this is not a city dweller. It wants to be crawling over rocks and hills. So set it free. The Gladiator comes with safety items that you expect, like AEV with forward collision warning, blind spot monitoring, and rear cross traffic alert, which is always handy to have. But the safety list could be a little bit better. The Gladiator only has a three-star ANCAP safety rating from testing done in 2019. It is based off its sibling, the Wrangler, but it's worth reading that ANCAP report if you're considering this for your family. This also only has four airbags, none of which cover that back row. The Gladiator comes with a five year or 100,000 kilometer warranty, whichever occurs first. But it's pretty standard to have an unlimited kilometer term in this class, so that was a little bit disappointing. It has a five year cap price servicing program and services are $399, which is competitive for the market. Servicing intervals are every 12 months or 12,000 kilometers, which could get a little bit painful if you put a lot of Ks on your car every year. There's just something about a Jeep Gladiator Rubicon that exudes a lot of fun. But it is a little bit awkward to get in and out of that cabin and the creature comforts are okay. If you're looking for a serious off-roader with great off-road capabilities, but you're not sticking your kids in this, this will suit your needs. So it's fun, absolutely. But I do value safety above all else. And I do think that there are some better utes on the market that tick more boxes for my family. So I give this a five and a half out of 10. My son wanted me to go off road this week. If he saw a pothole, wanted me to go over it. Saw a hill, wanted me to get up there. He just had so much fun in this, it's unbelievable. I don't think he actually wants me to hand it back. He gives it a 10 out of 10. If you're after more details, check out the full review at the Cars Guide site. The link will be in the description and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.